Yo, this is Muma, this is Linkser. We are doing the press game conference after our match against Seoul Post Dynasty. Game. Post game. What did I say? Press, press, game, press conference. game conference? Post oh. game conference. After our, you, uh, you failed! Okay, whatever. Against Seoul Dynasty. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, the first question is, how does it feel to come off a losing streak and take a W over Seoul Dynasty? It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, we... We finished this stage like very, we, we finished five and five with, we, we have zero map differential, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah so it's kind of like, this This stage was very, uh, it, it, it's not as bad as people think it is, but it's also not as good as our stage one, obviously. Mm. But thankfully our stage one was so dominant that we'll be able to, we're, we're still in like a pretty fine spot in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. And having this like end on a, such a high note, it's just reminding us of like what we're actually capable of. So I think hopefully we'll be able to ride that into stage three. All right, uh, Linkser, what's it like being the greatest widow on planet Earth? It's okay. <laughs> I just play the game. That's it? I mean, like... Tell us what it's like. Yeah. What's the life in the... What's the life of Yuri? Uh, depressing. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, what the heck? It, it, it's a little... You, you have to... That's up. There's a lot of pressure on you to uh, like meet people's expectations uh, when you get like good enough on video. It it actually becomes frustrating to be, like because like I have to physically fight against like thinking that I'm the best in the game. Like I know I'm good enough to contest like everyone in the game, but thinking that I would be the best and like then have like everyone think that it it's just it's just odd because then you start thinking like too many things like okay video. They're all gonna counter strat me and like my like maybe my team just like relies on it too much, you know. There's like a lot of things that go that goes into it and I, I I don't really want a title. Is it frustrating always having like those high expectations that you like constantly have to live up to, like because you've been so good? I mean it is I I I think frustrating was the wrong word. It's just like sometimes I just fear failing. And like if you're the be like if people consider the best, it's like more likely that you fear the failing, you know. I like being the underdog. Too but, bad. But, but still being <laughs> good. <laughs> the next question is, uh, how frustrating are pauses when you're on stage? I mean, when both of the pauses happened because our monitors like yeah. lagged, so it it wasn't like frustrating. It's like it's probably frustrating for the enemy team because they don't know what happened. For us, it's more fr frustrating what happened before the pause. I. Like, I I think pauses are super frustrating. Like, it sucks when you're just like in the in the game, and then all of a sudden, like, someone next to you just starts yelling because their monitor isn't working oh, yeah. or something. It's like, what? Well, okay, I yeah. guess. Like, yeah. just trying to compete, and then all of a sudden, Banny's just like, my monitor, ah! and it's just like, oh fuck, man, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah basically, the yeah. arms and everything. Yeah, it's it, it's like, yeah, like if you're the team that causes the pause, it's frustrating before the pause happens, and if you're the opposite team, it's annoying when the pause is on because you you were like just focus on the game and they also they also pause your comms so you like can't like speak to each other about like oh this is this is what's going wrong and then the other team can't be like oh we just paused and i'm in the middle of fighting someone so like what, what do we do because you just can't talk to each other yeah i mean it's understandable like in some sense all right the next question is do you feel that may is going to become more common in the meta as season three begins or stage three begins mm. Uh, no, prob <laughs> probably not. Th there are some maps where maybe cheese may strats would work, but I, I need to see the new buffs uh, what, what they were like teasing with the Reaper and All right, the last one for you guys is your favorite ice cream flavor and why? Ben and Jerry's half baked. Oh, I've had. That. It's the good stuff. Okay. That's got you got chocolate, vanilla, cookie dough, brownies. You got all the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got two uh, flavors that are like different. Uh, one is uh, pistachio flavor, and then one is licorice. Licorice flavor. Yeah. Yeah. All right, think? we're done. We're done here, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's, it's different. <laughs> to each their own. <laughs> I like strawberry. <laughs> I fucking love ice cream. Thanks for having me and Muma, uh, Rokus and Boeing. We'll continue on with the questions. See you guys. Now that you're done with stage two, what, if any, adjustments might you guys make to perform more competitively in stage three? I think the adjustments we'll make is like, like little ones. Uh, first, we had Spree playing all of King's Row, but today we realized that we had like a major flaw where we didn't have a Widow player. So we're having Spree on Widow, 
and that actually hurts us a lot because on third point and first point, Widow's extremely strong. Mm -hmm. And even though Spree is like the best Zarya in the league, uh, Linkser can do a good enough job to help us get to, you know, second. Like he can get us through second rather. Yeah. And I think that's what we decided to do today. We put Linkser in because we knew he had the best Widow in the league by far. Mm -hmm. And certain adjustments like that actually matter a lot in the long run. Yeah. And we'll we'll try to figure out, like. We'll try to figure out who is playing on what points, like yeah. like for like the specific roles. Say like, if Clock is playing, like we'll have Clock play on this certain point. If we want like a, a tracer duel list, or we want Jake to play because we want Jake to like play objective base. It's like it's it's gonna be like uh, we're gonna iron out some of our key mistakes with compositions and whatnot. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is you can see our king's row. Uh, we kind of like kept the same roster, and I think that's like one of the more important things is to try and keep the same amount of players in as much as you can. Make sure you like you have like a set six and only sub if you actually need it or if you have a full blown strategy for it. Uh, <coughs> we we kind of had that for Spree, um, but as Rocka said, like we transitioned away from it for today. But I think that's like an important theme going on is to try and keep the same people on the same roles as much as possible, and then adjust from there. All right. The next question is, uh, what game type do you guys think requires the most team coordination? <clears throat> I think for us, it's definitely cough. Like, I think team coordination on cough is really important. You can't make a single mistake on a dive because mm -hmm. that leads into like a 30 second loss. And 30 seconds on cough is 30%. So, definitely, cough is one of our weaknesses right now. Yeah. But as Overwatch League ke keeps continuing, from stage one, we were like one of the worst cough teams. And stage two, I think we were winning most of the coughs. But as like the season progresses and, you know, as Overwatch League continues, I think we're going to get better and better with our teamwork. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of the other game modes require a lot of strategy outside, especially 2CP. It, it's mostly like team coordination outside of the server, but I think Koth has the most like teamwork needed in the moment, uh, so I'd say Koth. Alright, the next question is, thoughts on Bridget and if and how she might affect the meta? So. What I like about Bridget is that there's not many supports that are introduced with like an ability to outplay other like mm -hmm. heroes. Bridget brings a lot to that, so she can almost if you're good at her, you can counter Winston leaps, which is like really huge because Winston leap is everything for his hero. Um, but what I like so much about Bridget is the fact that she isn't mainly a healer. She's more of like a. I think she's gonna fit into like uh, basically like kind of a three support lineup. It might be mm -hmm. like two supports: Bridget, DPS, and two tanks. Because Bridget can output a little bit of DPS, but she mainly is like there for control and protection. Yeah, and she's like a I CC. Think, yeah, she's like a CC, and she could definitely affect the tempo of fights. So I think she'll be like, I think she'll be introduced like fairly early into the stage whenever they decide to like let her be able to play. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, she's like a character that I kind of want to play really heavily. <laughs> <laughs> she looks really strong, but it's gonna be interesting to see where she actually fits yeah. because like you want to be able to run Lucio with her because she's a melee hero. But Lucio Bridget isn't enough healing, so you need like another healer. Maybe Lucio Bridget will be enough. I don't know. Maybe it won't. Like it's hard to see where she will fit. <clears throat> but I think she has like a lot. I, I like the fact that her kit is on such a low cooldown, yeah. so that you can constantly use abilities and you don't have to like hold them too hard. I think it's like really good and adds a lot of outplay. Also, I think she has the strongest ultimate in the game. Like Her ultimate's really strong. Her ultimate is actually god tier. The fact that she can speed people, is, it's a speed up and yeah. armor up, right? Yeah, it's it's a speed up and armor Speed up. up and armor up, and armor is the most broken stat in the game because like, it just is. Like there's, <laughs> yeah. So like for that to happen, and the fact that she gets to keep her armor and she, take no, she takes no yeah. damage, I mean, she goes into the next fight with like 300 HP. Yeah. It's, it's like, really shit. good with Zen, because yes. if the Zen doesn't take she damage, makes, she, she just makes, permanently She makes armored. Zen a way better hero, so I'm looking yeah. forward to playing with her. Or looking <laughs> forward to playing with her and playing her. Yeah. Cool. Uh, all right, the next one is, why did you guys decide to put Jake on Hanzo in Hanamura? Um, I think we just like the Hanzo strat. I think, we like, I think the difference between Widow and Hanzo on that map is Widow is a pick-centric hero, mm. meaning like she's going to pick the supports really easily. And we wanted we wanted Hanzo to focus tanks like we wanted to be able to, we wanted to have Hanzo to be able to like focus tanks on as well. Yeah. And plus, Linkser is really good at tracer, so we're gonna keep Linkser on that tracer role for as long as we can. Yeah. And let Jake do his thing on Hanzo because he's also very confident in his Hanzo, and it transitions better in a second point because he's also a good soldier player. And if we feel like we want to yeah. play you know Genji or Junkrat, there you go. We always have our tracer player, and then we have Jake being able to flex because I don't think Widow 
besides first is very good. Like Widow on second. It doesn't second's, transition. Yeah, well it doesn't transition yeah. very well. So that's our mindset. Actually, that's not our mindset. That's Tyrong's mindset. He wanted us to play the Hanzo originally. So yeah, we just stuck with it and had good success. Yeah, I think it just fits our lineup too. Yeah, it just fits Jake well. He likes Hanzo. <laughs> and, all right, subscribe. All right. Do all the good stuff. Shut up. <laughs> All right, thanks guys for watching the Houston Outlaws <laughs> press conference. Remember to like, favorite, and subscribe. Mahalo, bro. <laughs> someone just, someone just messaged yeah. me and said,